Mohamed Morsi, Wikipedia article audio. Mohamed Morsi L. J. J. T. Born August 8, 1951 is an Egyptian politician who served as the fifth president of Egypt, from June 30, 2012 to July 3, 2013, when General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi removed Morsi from office in the 2013 Egyptian coup d'état after the June 2013 Egyptian protests. Early Life and Education Academic and Engineering Career Political Career 2011 Detention 2012 Egyptian Presidential Campaign Beliefs On Changing the Government On Islamic Society and Non-Muslims in Egypt President of Egypt Domestic Policy November 2012 Declaration Foreign Policy Personnel Arab World Syria Iran Israel and Palestine Statements on Israel and Israelis International Summits African Union Non-Aligned Movement Organization of Islamic Cooperation Summit Overthrow and Criminal Trial Trial Personal Life As President, Morsi issued a temporary constitutional declaration in late November that in effect granted him unlimited powers and the power to legislate without judicial oversight or review of his acts. The new constitution that was then hastily drawn up by the Islamist-dominated Constitutional Assembly, presented to the President, and scheduled for a referendum, before the Supreme Constitutional Court could rule on the constitutionality of the Assembly, was described by independent press agencies not aligned with the regime as an Islamist coup. These issues along with complaints of prosecutions of journalists and attacks on non-violent demonstrators, led to the 2012 Egyptian protests. As part of a compromise, Morsi rescinded the decrees. In the referendum he held on the new constitution it was approved by approximately two-thirds of voters. Citations Notes on June 30, 2013, protests erupted across Egypt, which saw protesters calling for the president's resignation. In response to the events, Morsi was given a 48-hour ultimatum by the military to meet their demands and to resolve political differences, or else they would intervene by implementing their own road map for the country. He was unseated on July 3 by a military coup council consisting of Defense Minister Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, opposition leader Mohammed el baradi the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar Ahmed el Taib, and Coptic Pope Tawadros II. The military suspended the constitution and established a new administration now led by General Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. The Muslim Brotherhood protested against the military coup, but the pro-Morsi protests were crushed in the August 2013 Rabah massacre in which at least 817 civilians were killed. Opposition leader El Baradi quit in protest of the massacre. Since his overthrow, Egyptian prosecutors have charged Morsi with various crimes and sought the death penalty a move denounced by Amnesty International as a charade based on null and void procedures. His death sentence was overturned, so he will receive a retrial. However, Morsi is still currently imprisoned. Mohamed Morsi was born in the Sharkia Governorate, in northern Egypt, of modest provincial origin, in the village of El Adwa, north of Cairo on August 8, 1951. 
His father was a farmer and his mother a housewife. He is the eldest of five brothers, and told journalists that he remembers being taken to school on the back of a donkey. In the late 1960s, he moved to Cairo to study at Cairo University, and earned a BA in engineering with high honors in 1975. He fulfilled his military service in the Egyptian army from 1975 to 1976, serving in the Chemical Warfare Unit. He then resumed his studies at Cairo University and earned an MS in Metallurgical Engineering in 1978. After completing his master's degree, Morsi earned a government scholarship that enabled him to study in the United States. He received a Ph.D. in Materials Science from the University of Southern California in 1982 with his dissertation High Temperature Electrical Conductivity and Defect Structure of Donor Doped Al-203. While living in the United States, Morsi became an assistant. Prof. At the California State University, Northridge from 1982 to 1985. Morsi, an expert on precision metal surfaces, also worked with NASA in the early 1980s, helping to develop space shuttle engines. In 1985, Morsi quit his job at CSUN and returned to Egypt, becoming a professor at Zagazig University, where he was appointed head of the engineering department. Morsi was a lecturer at Zagazig University's engineering department until 2010. Morsi was first elected to parliament in 2000. He served as a member of parliament from 2000 to 2005, officially as an independent candidate because the Brotherhood was technically barred from running candidates for office under Mubarak. He was a member of the Guidance Office of the Muslim Brotherhood until the founding of the Freedom and Justice Party in 2011, at which point he was elected by the MB's Guidance Office to be the first president of the new party. While serving in this capacity in 2010, Morsi stated that the two-state solution is nothing but a delusion concocted by the brutal usurper of the Palestinian lands. Morsi condemned the September 11 attacks as horrific crime against innocent civilians. However, he accused the United States of using the 9-11 attacks as a pretext for invading Afghanistan and Iraq, and claimed that the U.S. had not provided evidence that the attackers were Muslims. He also stated that the aircraft collision alone did not bring down the World Trade Center suggesting something happened from the inside. Such views are held by most Egyptians, including Egyptian liberals. His comments drew criticism in the United States. Morsi was arrested along with 24 other Muslim Brotherhood leaders on January 28, 2011. He escaped from prison in Cairo two days later. The break of Wadi El Natraun prison received widespread news coverage within hours of its occurrence, with some reports indicating the political prisoners were sprung from detention by armed gangs taking advantage of the chaos of the Egyptian revolution. Four years later, Morsi faced trial for his role in the prison break. He and 105 others were sentenced to death on May 16, 2015. The Court of Cassation overturned the death sentence on Morsi and five others and then ordered retrials. After Karay El Shatter was disqualified from the 2012 presidential election, Morsi, who was initially nominated as a backup candidate, emerged as the new Muslim Brotherhood candidate. His campaign was supported by well-known Egyptian cleric Safwat Hegazi at a rally in El Mehala El Kubra, the epicenter of Egyptian worker protests. 
following the first round of Egypt's first post-Mubarak presidential elections where exit polls suggested a 25.5% share of the vote for Morsi, he was officially announced as the president on June 24, 2012, following a subsequent runoff vote. Morsi supporters in Cairo's Tahrir Square celebrated, and angry outbursts occurred at the Egypt Election Authority's press conference when the result was announced. He came in slightly ahead of former Mubarak Arab Prime Minister Ahmed Shafiq and has been noted for the Islamist character of his campaign events. Since the initial round of voting on May 23 and May 24, 2012, Morsi had attempted to appeal to political liberals and minorities while portraying his rival Ahmed Shafiq as a holdover from the Mubarak era of secular moderation. On May 30, 2012, Morsi filed a lawsuit against Egyptian television presenter Tafak Okasha, accusing him of intentional falsehoods and accusations that amount to defamation and slander. According to online newspaper Egypt Independent, an English-language subsidiary of Egyptian daily Al-Masri al, al yum Okasha spent three hours on May 27, 2012, criticizing the Muslim Brotherhood and Morsi on air. After Okasha aired a video allegedly depicting Tunisian Islamist extremists executing a Christian while asking how will such people govern, some analysts suggested that this was in reference to Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood Party. The Tunisian government characterized the video as a farce in a harshly worded statement. On June 24, 2012, Morsi was announced as the winner of the election with 51.73% of the vote. Almost immediately afterward, he resigned from the presidency of the Freedom and Justice Party. I hope the people will choose me, an Islamist candidate from the Freedom and Justice Party and Muslim Brotherhood, and God willing the system will move towards stability and development. Morsi said no entity will be above the Constitution but did not spell out his vision for the army's status. He said the army's budget should be overseen by parliament but there would be a need for secrecy in specific areas. He promised to respect the constitution of Egypt and said the Freedom and Justice Party would not impose what we believe on people. He said Egyptians sought to live in a society in which all had equal rights. He also linked the 2011 revolution to an Islamic awakening in the Middle East. Morsi said Coptic Christians are certainly just as Egyptian as I am, and have as much a right to this homeland as I do. He said freedom of religion is a right granted by Allah and Sharia commands Muslims to respect the rights of non-Muslim compatriots. Morsi also compared free markets to the Islamic system but said Islam requires there to be an ethical component to ensure that the poor share in society's wealth. Morsi was sworn in on June 30, 2012, as Egypt's first democratically elected president. He succeeded Hosni Mubarak, who left the office of the president of Egypt vacant after being forced to resign on February 11, 2011. Morsi reconvened parliament in its original form on July 10, 2012, this was expected to cause friction between him and the military officials who dissolved the legislature. Morsi sought to influence the drafting of a new constitution of Egypt, favoring a constitution that protects civil rights and enshrines Islamic law. In a speech to supporters in Cairo's Tahrir Square on June 30, 2012, Morsi briefly mentioned that he would work to free Omar Abdel Rahman, convicted of the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center in New York City, along with the many Egyptians who were arrested during the revolution.
A Brotherhood spokesperson later said that the extradition was for humanitarian reasons and that Morsi did not intend to overturn Abdel Rahman's criminal convictions. On July 10, 2012, Morsi reinstated the Islamist-dominated parliament that was disbanded by the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt on June 14, 2012. According to Egypt's official news agency, Morsi ordered the immediate return of legislators elected in 2011, a majority of whom are members of Morsi's Freedom and Justice Party and other Islamist groups. A Morsi spokesman announced that the president-elect would appoint a Christian and a woman as vice-presidents, but eventually appointed Mahmoud Meki, a Muslim man. On December 22, 2012, Meki resigned. After Kamal Ghanzuri's resignation, Morsi tasked Hesham Kandil with forming the new government. On August 2, 2012, Kandil was sworn in as Prime Minister. Morsi also objected to a constitutional provision limiting presidential power. On August 12, 2012, Morsi asked Mohammed Hussein Tantai, head of the country's armed forces, and Sami Hafez Ainan, the army chief of staff, to resign. He also announced that the constitutional amendments passed by the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces restricting the president's powers would be annulled. Morsi's spokesman, Yasser Ali, announced that both Tantai and Ainan would remain advisors to the president. Morsi named Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, who was then serving as chief of military intelligence, as Egypt's new defense minister. The New York Times described the move as an upheaval and a stunning purge, given the power that SCAF had taken after the fall of Mubarak. Al Jazeera described it as escalating the power struggle between the president and military. On August 14, 2012, Mohammed Salem, an Egyptian lawyer, filed a legal challenge over Morsi's removal of Tantai and Ainan, arguing that Morsi planned to bring back the totalitarian regime. Morsi fired two more high-rank security officials on August 16, 2012, Intelligence Chief Murad Muwafi the Director of the Intelligence Directorate and the Commander of his Presidential Guards. On August 27, 2012, Morsi named 21 advisors and aides that included three women and two Christians and a large number of Islamist-leaning figures. He also appointed new governors to the 27 regions of the country. In October 2012, Morsi's government unveiled plans for the development of a major economic and industrial hub adjoining the Suez Canal. Funding commitments had been received including $8 billion from Qatar. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development committed €1 billion. Euros. On March 19, 2013 on a visit to India, Morsi sought support from India's Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. Although the project did not proceed under Morsi, his successor Abdel Fattah el-Sisi revived and launched a streamlined version of the corridor in conjunction with an expansion of the Suez Canal in August 2014. On October 19, 2012, Morsi travelled to Egypt's northwestern Matru in his first official visit to deliver a speech on Egyptian unity at El Tina Im Mosque. Immediately prior to his speech he participated in prayers there where he openly mouthed Amen as cleric Futu Abd al-Nabi Mansar, the local head of religious endowment, declared, deal with the Jews and their supporters. O Allah, disperse them, rend them asunder. O Allah, demonstrate your might and greatness upon them. Show us your omnipotence, O Lord. 
The prayers were broadcast on Egyptian state television and translated by memory. Originally memory translated the broadcast as destroy the Jews and their supporters. O oh Allah, disperse them, rend them asunder, but later revised their translation. Morsi did not attend the enthronement of Coptic Pope Tawadros II on November 18, 2012 at Abasaya Cathedral, though Prime Minister Hesham Kandil did attend. On November 22, 2012, Morsi issued a declaration purporting to protect the work of the Constituent Assembly drafting the new constitution from judicial interference. In effect, this declaration immunized his actions from any legal challenge. The decree states that it only applies until a new constitution is ratified. The declaration also requires a retrial of those accused in the Mubarak era killings of protesters, who had been acquitted, and extends the mandate of the Constituent Assembly by two months. Additionally, the declaration authorizes Morsi to take any measures necessary to protect the revolution. Liberal and secular groups walked out of the Constitutional Constituent Assembly because they believed that it would impose strict Islamic practices, while members of the Muslim Brotherhood supported Morsi. The move was criticized by Mohammed el Baradi, who said Morsi had usurped all state powers and appointed himself Egypt's new pharaoh. The move led to massive protests and violent action throughout Egypt with protesters erecting tents in Tahrir Square, the site of the protests that preceded the resignation of Hosni Mubarak. The protesters demanded a reversal of the declaration and the dissolution of the Constituent Assembly. Those gathered in the square called for a huge protest on November 27. Clashes were reported between protesters and police. The declaration was also condemned by human rights groups such as Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch and Freedom House. Egypt's highest body of judges decried the ruling as an unprecedented assault on the independence of the judiciary and its rulings. Abdel Megid Mahmoud, a prosecutor appointed by Hosni Mubarak, declared the decree null and void. Morsi further emphasized his argument that the decree is temporary, and said he wanted dialogue with the opposition. Morsi's statement failed to appease either the judges or citizenry dissatisfied with his decision and sparked days of protests in Tahrir Square. Though the declarations's language had not been altered, Morsi agreed to limit the scope of the decree to sovereign matters following four days of opposition protests and the resignation of several senior advisers. Morsi's spokesman said an agreement, reached with top judicial authorities, would leave most of the president's actions subject to review by the courts, but preserve his power to protect the constituent assembly from being dissolved by the courts before it had finished its work. President Morsi also agreed there would be no further retrials of former officials under Hosni Mubarak, unless new evidence was presented. On December 1, 2012, the Constituent Assembly handed the draft constitution to Morsi, who announced that a constitutional referendum would be held on December 15, 2012. On December 4, 2012, Morsi left his presidential palace after a number of protesters broke through police cordons around the palace, with some climbing atop an armored police vehicle and waving flags. On December 8, 2012, Morsi annulled his decree that had expanded his presidential authority and removed judicial review of his decrees, an Islamist official said but added that the effects of that declaration would stand. A constitutional referendum was still planned for December 15. George Isaac of the Constitution Party said that Morsi's declaration did not offer anything new, the National Salvation Front rejected it as an attempt save face, 
and the April 6 movement and Gamal Fahmi of the Egyptian Journalists Syndicate said the new declaration failed to address the fundamental problem of the nature of the assembly that was tasked with drafting the constitution. Khaled al Kazaz was the Secretary on Foreign Relations from 2012 to 2013 in the Morsi government. Morsi's first official foreign visit was to Saudi Arabia on July 11, 2012. During this visit, Morsi stated that he intends to strengthen ties with the oil-rich monarchy, which also maintained close ties with the Mubarak government. Morsi has seen strong support from Qatar, which has maintained long-held ties with the Muslim Brotherhood of which Morsi was a member until his election. Qatar has declared that it would provide Egypt with two billion US dollars just as Morsi announced the reshuffle in the cabinet on August 12, 2012. Meanwhile, investors from Qatar have pledged to invest 10 billion in Egyptian infrastructure. As a staunch supporter of the opposition forces in the Syrian civil war, Morsi attended an Islamist rally on June 15, 2013, where Salaf clerics called for jihad in Syria and denounced supporters of Bashar al-Assad as infidels. Morsi, who announced at the rally that his government had expelled Syria's ambassador and closed the Syrian embassy in Cairo, called for international intervention on behalf of the opposition forces in the effect of an establishment of a no-fly zone. Although he did not explicitly call for Egyptians to join the opposition armed forces in the Syrian conflict, Morsi's attendance at the June 15 rally was seen by many to be an implicit nod of approval for the Islamist clerics' calls for jihad in Syria. Morsi was criticized by Egyptian analysts for attending and speaking at the rally, while the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces released a statement the day after the rally saying that its only role is to protect Egypt's borders, in an apparent ruling out of support for intervention in Syria. Morsi's attendance at the rally was later revealed to be a major factor in the largely secular SCAF's decision to side with anti-Morsi protesters over the Morsi government during the widespread June 2013 anti-Morsi protests. Up to 100,000 Syrian refugees have arrived in Egypt following Morsi's inauguration as president. The government under Morsi has also supported Syrian refugees living in Egypt by offering residency permits, assistance on finding employment, allowing Syrian refugee children to register in state schools and access to other public services. During his tenure, Morsi strengthened ties with Iran following pre-revolutionary years of animosity between the two countries. However, his actions were met with Sunni Muslim opposition both inside and outside Egypt. In October 2012, Morsi wrote a friendly letter to then-Israeli President Shimon Peres. The letter largely followed standard diplomatic language. Morsi called Paris a great and good friend and went on to call for maintaining and strengthening the cordial relations which so happily exist between our two countries. Morsi closed the letter by expressing highest esteem and consideration. Gamal Muhammad Heshmat asserted that the letter was fabricated saying that Zionist media have leaked baseless statements by Morsi in the past. However, Morsi spokesman Yasser Ali told Egyptian state-run newspaper Arm that the letter was 100% correct. Previously, in July 2012, Morsi had refuted a fabricated letter. Morsi said in his victory speech that he would honor all of Egypt's international treaties, which was thought to be a reference to Egypt's treaty with Israel. Morsi's government condemned the Operation Pillar of Defense and called for a ceasefire. Morsi sent Prime Minister Hesham Kandil to Gaza to express solidarity with Gaza and Hamas, 
a stark contrast to Hosni Mubarak's treatment of Hamas as an enemy in the 2008-09 Gaza War. Egypt, along with the United States mediated the ceasefire with Hamas and Israel. In January 2013, statements made by Morsi in 2010, gained wide attention in the Western media, following a report in Forbes magazine on January 11 that criticized big media outlets for having ignored it. In videos posted by memory, Morsi had declared the Zionists have no right to the land of Palestine. There is no place for them on the land of Palestine. What they took before 1947-48 constitutes plunder, and what they are doing now is a continuation of this plundering. By no means do we recognize their green line. The land of Palestine belongs to the Palestinians, not to the Zionists. In September 2010, calling the Israelis bloodsuckers, warmongers, and descendants of apes and pigs, Morsi said these futile negotiations are a waste of time and opportunities. The Zionists buy time and gain more opportunities, as the Palestinians, the Arabs, and the Muslims lose time and opportunities, and they get nothing out of it. We can see how this dream has dissipated. This dream has always been an illusion. This authority was created by the Zionist and American enemies for the sole purpose of opposing the will of the Palestinian people and its interests. White House spokesman Jay Carney tried to downplay Morsi's remarks, saying that U.S. policy is focused on actions, not words. Morsi later contended that his remarks were taken out of context and his exchange with a delegation headed by John McCain was made public. Morsi told the delegation he was committed to freedom of religion and belief, his spokesman said, adding, His Excellency pointed out the need to distinguish between the Jewish religion, and those who belong to it, and violent actions against defenseless Palestinians. During a visit to Germany in January 2013, Morsi again stated that his remarks were taken out of context, insisting that they were intended as a criticism of Israel's policies toward the Palestinians. Addressing reporters, Morsi stated that not against the Jewish faith or the Jewish people. My comments were about conduct that sheds blood and kills innocent people things neither I nor anyone condones. My comments were about the conduct and manners, the killings, and the aggression by tanks and warplanes and cluster bombs and internationally banned weapons against innocent people. Morsi also stated that, cannot be against the Jewish faith or Jews or Christianity and Christians, pointing out that the Quran requires Muslims to believe in all religions. Morsi attended the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa from 15 to July 16, 2012, this was the first visit to Ethiopia by Egypt's president in 17 years since the attempted assassination of Hosni Mubarak in June 1995. Later, in June 2013, Politicians called by Morsi were overheard suggesting attacking Ethiopia to stop it from building a dam on a Nile tributary. Morsi attended the 16th summit of the non-aligned movement in Tehran at the end of August 2012, in a visit that could resume normal relations for the countries. Their diplomatic relationship has been strained since Egypt signed a peace treaty with Israel in 1979. Morsi made a speech against the Syrian government and called on the Syrian opposition to unite during the Syrian civil war. His comments about Syria, however, were not covered by Iranian media clearly. He sparked controversy saying that it is an ethical duty to support the Syrian people against the oppressive regime in Damascus. Morsi hosted the Islamic summit in Cairo with the presence of 57 leaders of Muslim nations. 
the summit called for a serious dialogue between Syria's government and an opposition coalition on a political transition to put an end to the devastating civil war. Morsi awarded Ekmeldin Isinoglu the Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Order of the Nile, which is Egypt's highest state honor. On June 30, 2013, millions of people rallied across Egypt calling for President Morsi's resignation from office. Concurrently with these anti Morsi demonstrations, his supporters held a sit-in in Rabat al adaya Square. On July 1, the Egyptian armed forces issued a 48-hour ultimatum that gave the country's political parties until July 3 to meet the demands of the Egyptian people. The Egyptian military also threatened to intervene if the dispute was not resolved by then. Four ministers also resigned on the same day including Tourism Minister Hisham Zazu, Communication and IT Minister Atef Helmi, State Minister for Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Hadam Bagato and State Minister for Environmental Affairs Khaled Abdel Aal, leaving the government with members of the Muslim Brotherhood only. On July 2, President Morsi publicly rejected the Egyptian army's 48-hour ultimatum and vowed to pursue his own plans for national reconciliation and resolving the political crisis. On July 3, Abdul Fattah al-Sisi announced a roadmap for the future, removing Morsi from office and appointed Adli Mansar, the head of the Constitutional Court, the interim president of Egypt. On July 8, Prime Minister Kandil, after initially deciding to remain in his position until the formation of a new government, submitted his resignation effective immediately in protest of the subsequent bloodshed to the recent coup d'état when 51 protesters were killed by the military at the Republican Guard headquarters. In mid-November, Morsi claimed that he was kidnapped and held in a Republican guard house on July 2. He said that he had been kept there until July 5 and forcibly moved again to a naval base where he spent the next four months. The spokesperson of the Egyptian armed forces, Colonel Ahmed Ali, later denied the rumors that Morsi was badly treated, saying that they had nothing to hide. The Egyptian army later gave Catherine Ashton the High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy for the European Union the permission to meet Morsi. Ashton later stated that Morsi is doing well, saying Morsi was keeping up with the latest developments in the country through television and newspapers. So we were able to talk about the situation, and we were able to talk about the need to move forward. The people around him do care for him. I looked at the facilities. Morsi could later meet an African Union delegation too. After his overthrow, Morsi faced several charges including inciting the killing of opponents protesting outside his palace, espionage for foreign militant groups including Hamas, Hezbollah and Iran's Revolutionary Guards for escaping Wadi el-Natraun prison during the 2011 revolution prior to his election as president, leaking classified documents to Qatar, in addition to insulting the judiciary, a charge still under investigation. On September 1, 2013, prosecutors referred Morsi to trial on charges of inciting deadly violence. The date was set for November 4, 2013. Morsi will be tried in a criminal court for inciting his supporters to kill at least 10 opponents, use violence, and torture protesters. The prosecutor's investigation revealed that Morsi had asked the Republican Guard and the Minister of Interior to break up his opponent's sit-in but they refused fearing a bloody result before Morsi's aides asked his supporters to break up the sit-in with force. On December 18, 2013, 
Prosecutor General Hisham Barakat ordered the referral of Morsi to criminal court for charges of espionage in a statement under the title The Biggest Case of Espionage in the History of Egypt. According to the Prosecutor General's investigations, the International Organization of the Muslim Brotherhood, aided by Hezbollah and Hamas, is the reason behind violence inside Egypt. Members intend to create a state of ultimate chaos after receiving media and military training in the Gaza and aim to implement jihadists in Sinai. On January 29, 2014, Morsi faced trial for the second time for the charge of breaking out of jail during the Egyptian Revolution of 2011 after conspiring with foreign militant groups, including Hamas to spread violent chaos throughout Egypt. The trial was postponed for a month. On February 1, 2014, Morsi's trial resumed on charges of inciting deadly violence. The trial was adjourned to the next day to hear witnesses for the prosecution, but it was then repeatedly postponed. In April 2015, the court convicted Morsi, along with 12 other defendants, including former MP Mohamed Beltaji, for the arrest and torture of protesters and incitement to violence. All defendants were acquitted of murder charges. The judge handed down a 20-year sentence for Morsi and the others who were convicted. Morsi still faced separate trials for espionage, terrorism, and prison break charges and was sentenced to death on May 16 along with other defendants. The death penalty was handed down to Morsi and 105 others for their role in the Wadi El Natrun prison break of January 2011. As per Egypt's penal code, the opinion was referred to the Grand Mufti, whose assent or dissent is legally non-binding. Amnesty International has denounced the death penalty as a charade based on null and void procedures. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan criticized Egypt and accused Western countries of hypocrisy, while the West is abolishing the death penalty, they are just watching the continuation of death sentences in Egypt. In June 2016, Morsi was sentenced to a life sentence for passing state secrets to Qatar. He is one of the defendants in the case along with two other journalists who had been sentenced to death in absentia. In November 2016, the Court of Cassation overturned death penalty on Morsi for spying charges as well five other Muslim Brotherhood members. The same court will review two other charges on Morsi for his role on the January 2011 prison break as well as for allegedly providing classified information to the government of Qatar. Morsi married his cousin, Nagla Ali Mahmoud, in 1979. She reportedly stated that she did not want to be referred to as First Lady but rather as First Servant. Morsi has five children, Ahmed Mohamed Morsi, who is a physician in Saudi Arabia, Shaima, a graduate of Zagazig University, Osama, an attorney, Omar who has a Bachelor in Commerce from Zagazig University, and Abdullah, a high school student. Two of Morsi's five children were born in California and are U.S. citizens by birth. Morsi has three grandchildren. His third son, Omar, was appointed to the holding company for airports, a state-owned company, six months after his graduation. However, he declined the job offer due to many rumors and attacks in the media and press. On his first state visit to Pakistan, Morsi was awarded an honorary doctorate of philosophy by National University of Sciences and Technology in Islamabad, Pakistan on March 18, 2013 in recognition of his achievements and significant contributions towards the promotion of peace and harmony in the world and strengthening of relations with the Muslim countries, 
especially Pakistan. Italic, acting or interim president. <laughs>